Here's how to make pumpkin sourdough sandwich bread. It's beautifully orange on the inside, and with it, you can make a delicious pumpkin spice sourdough cinnamon toast. It's amazing. Start out with a mixing bowl and pop that onto your digital scale. Then add 100 grams of whole milk to the mixing bowl. Follow that with 50 grams of water and then 200 grams of plain pumpkin puree. Not pumpkin pie filling, of course, because it's got a lot of stuff added to it, but just pure pumpkin puree, which is just cooked, blended pumpkin. Then add to that 25 grams of sugar and 10 grams of salt. Kosher salt or sea salt will both work fine. And then you need to add 100 grams of active sourdough starter that has doubled in size. About six hours ago, I took 25 grams of starter out of the fridge, fed it 50 grams of water, 50 grams of bread flour, and now it's doubled in size and ready to use. So add 100 grams of starter to your mixing bowl, and then you could take the leftover starter that's left in your jar, for me that's just 25 grams, and you can put that back into the fridge for the next time you want to bake. Now go ahead and mix up all of the wet ingredients with a spoon for about a minute or so. You want to bring all of those ingredients together into one orange liquid now before you add the flour. The bread will end up looking a lot better that way. Then add 450 grams of all-purpose flour. Today I'm using the King Arthur brand of all-purpose flour for this recipe, but if you want to use their bread flour, I know that you can use both of those flours interchangeably for this recipe. So use bread flour or all-purpose. 450 grams of bread flour into the bowl, and then go ahead and mix everything up into one cohesive dough. You might need to mix for a minute or two. Try to get rid of as many of those dry clumps of flour as possible. Once your dough is dry and shaggy and it's hard to keep stirring it, go ahead and transition to using your hands. You can knead the dough in the bowl for about a minute or so just to bring it all together and get rid of those dry clumps. This dough is a little bit drier at this point because we haven't added the last ingredient, the butter but you're gonna do that after the first 30 minute rest. So once the dough looks like this, it's a cohesive mass, cover up the mixing bowl with some plastic wrap, a kitchen towel, or some kind of airtight lid, and let the dough rest for 30 minutes. A half hour later, it's time to add the butter. The dough at this point should hold together a little bit better than it used to, and the gluten will have developed a little bit more. That's when it's the perfect time to add the butter. So take 54 grams of softened butter. It's just room temperature softened butter. 54 grams is half of a U.S. stick, by the way. So just take half a stick of butter that's been left at room temperature, put it directly on top of the dough, and then mush it into the dough with your fingertips. Once it all gets kind of dimpled into the dough like this, you can start squeezing the butter into the dough. The goal here is to get the dough to accept the butter and absorb it. It might seem like it's a challenging task at first and like the butter is never gonna become one with the dough, but after a minute or two of squeezing and light kneading, the dough really does absorb that butter and then you can do a set of stretch and folds. At this point, once I've seen most of that butter disappear into the dough, I'm just grabbing an edge of the dough, stretching it up and folding it over the top. And I'm going to go around the bowl a few times, maybe actually 10 to 20 times on the first go around and just stretch and fold and stretch and fold. That's going to give the dough some structure and it's going to give additional gluten development to this dough. So once you've given your dough 10 to 20 stretch and folds, go ahead and just cover it up again with a kitchen towel and let the dough rest for another 30 minutes. A half hour later, it's time for the second of three sets of stretch and folds. The butter's all been added, so now it's all about just developing that structure and gluten development in the dough. So stretch and fold, go around the bowl about eight to 10 times until the dough starts to resist your stretching. Then you can cover up the bowl with a kitchen towel once more and let it rest for 30 minutes one last time. Now for the last set of stretch and folds, stretch and fold the dough about 10 more times going around the bowl just like the previous two sets. And once you're done, flip the dough over so that the smooth side is facing up and the seam side is underneath. It's now time for the dough to go through its first rise or the bulk fermentation. So cover up your dough with a kitchen towel or preferably some plastic wrap or an airtight lid so your dough doesn't dry out. You'll see what happens to my dough in just a little bit. And let your dough rise on the counter at room temperature overnight for six to eight hours. The next day, my dough, just six and a half hours later, looked like this. It was completely doubled in size. You'll see a little bit of dry patches on the top of my dough because I didn't cover this with an airtight lid. My mistake, but we can recover from this. Take your dough out onto a clean part of your counter, no flour necessary, and gently pre-shape it into a ball like this. You're just creating tension across the top of the dough. 
I like to do a pre-shape first before I give it its final shape for the bread pan. The pre-shape helps it with a little bit of structure. Just cover it up after it's pre-shaped, let it rest for 15 minutes or so, then uncover it and get out your bread pan. I prefer to use a metal bread pan and this is the one I like to use. It's a non-stick pan from USA Pan. To give your dough its final shape, sprinkle the top of the dough with a little bit of bread flour, then spread it around. Flip the dough over so the smooth side is against the counter and the sticky side is facing up. Then just gently shape the dough, press it down with your fingertips, shaping it into a rectangle or a general square shape is fine. And then take the edges of the dough and fold the right third over the middle third like this, and then just press down a little bit so it sticks into itself. Then take the left third and fold it over the middle third as well. Make those seams meet somewhere in the middle, overlapping just a little bit, and press down the seam. Then roll your dough from one end to the other like this. You're rolling it into a cylinder. You're basically pressing and rolling it into a tight cylindrical loaf shape like this. Easy as that. Then if you've got a non-stick pan like me, you can pop the dough directly into the pan with no oil or anything. But I realized I had a little bit of extra butter on that butter wrapper. So I added that to the inside of the pan just to make sure nothing went to waste and to add some extra flavor. Place your shaped dough into the prepared pan. There's no real reason to press it down or anything. You can just pop it into the pan and it's ready to rise. For the final proof, cover up your dough and let it rise at room temperature for three to six hours until it's very puffy and doubled in size. Then a half hour before you're ready to bake, preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and keep a metal pan on the bottom rack of the oven. You're gonna use that to add steam to the oven later. Exactly four hours later, my dough had proofed to double in size and it was ready to bake. Generally for sandwich breads, I like to proof them extra long so they're nice, light, and airy on the inside. The perfect place to be is when the dough barely bounces back when you poke it. For the final pre-baked touch, brush the dough with one beaten egg. This is an egg wash that you typically see on breads like brioche. Since there's no eggs in the dough, this bread is not a brioche, but I still like to use the egg wash on top. It will give the bread a nice shiny top when it comes out of the oven after it's done baking. When your pumpkin sourdough sandwich bread looks like this, move it directly to your preheated oven. You can put it on a baking stone or not, either way is fine. And then add about a cup of boiling water to that preheated metal cake pan. This will add steam to the oven, which will allow the bread to rise beautifully and have a nice crust on the outside. Bake the bread for 20 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Then 20 minutes later, open the oven and turn that bread pan around just so the bread bakes evenly on both sides. That's an optional step. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, but definitely remove the steam pan. You don't need that anymore for the second half of the bake. Continue baking for another 25 to 30 minutes at 400 until your bread looks nice and golden brown like this. Now it's time to let the bread cool for about an hour before slicing into it. It's really easy to remove the bread from this nonstick pan. I just slide the bread out of the pan and transfer it onto my wooden cooling rack. Let your bread rest for at least one hour. The danger of slicing in too early is that your bread could be gummy on the inside. After an hour rest, it's time for me to slice into this bread and do a taste test. My first impressions are that I love the orange color on the inside of this dough. That brilliant orange color just reminds me of fall, and using ingredients like sweet potatoes and pumpkin in my bread recipes is really something I only do in the fall anyway. I guess I really just like the seasonal aspect of it for me. The pumpkin puree adds a really nice softness to the sandwich bread, but since pumpkin puree has a very mild and subdued flavor, the flavor of this bread is mild as well. I'm gonna show you two ways I really like to enjoy a toasted slice of this bread. The first one is just adding some softened butter and then a strong drizzle of honey. I think that the sweetness in the honey and the creaminess of the butter really pair well with the mellow tanginess of the pumpkin sourdough flavor. That's just a great slice of toast, and here's one more. This is like a fall version of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Take a toasted slice of this bread, butter it up as generously as you like. This is about my style right here. Then add a few sprinkles of pumpkin pie spice. Instead of adding cinnamon or cinnamon sugar, this pumpkin pie spice is gonna add the flavors of fall to the seasonal toast. Then to round out this toast, add a good drizzle of honey or a sprinkle of white sugar and tell me if that isn't one of the best pieces of toast you've ever had in your life. I think getting to have this piece of toast is reason enough to make this recipe.